With Al Qadim, SSI is only one title away from saying goodbye to its AD&D license. The series has been a mixed bag, but Al Qadim is a strong game that gives me hopes for an excellent finish to the series. Al Qadim is definitely not a standard SSI AD&D game. Although the title may imply an RPG, this game has surprisingly few RPG elements, but I think it works anyway. Al Qadim is a simple one character adventure game with arcade like combat, sort of like the adventure games you'd find in a cartridge system. It's very easy to get into, and I had a lot of fun playing it. If you're hoping that Al Qadim will show you a new look, don't. It's almost identical to SSI's own Dark Sun, except that Al Qadim doesn't allow multi character parties. It makes up for this with larger characters and more detailed art. The Arabian setting is a nice change of pace from the standard, generic Tolkien medieval fantasy dungeon crawl. I like the interface too. You use the mouse to move around and click on things to talk, pick up objects and attack and so on. There are optional keyboard controls as well. The escape key pops up a menu to let you see your stats, check your inventory, and all the other standard functions. I like the way the game kept the screen uncluttered by information you don't need all the time. The storyline is deep and original. No, really. You play the role of a Corsair, a rough-and-tumble warrior whose family is imprisoned because the family genie was caught destroying ships in a nearby sea. The government believes that your parents commanded the genie to do so, but you are sure of their innocence and set out to rescue them and uncover the true story. The story makes me want to keep playing to the end. One thing I didn't like, though, was the handling of your character's personality. If you're supposed to be a rough, uncivilized warrior, why do you get experience points for doing goodly deeds, like handing out money to strangers? Well, SSI scores poorly in the role-playing department, but it doesn't really affect the game very much, so it's forgivable. The fighting system is very straightforward. The left mouse button or enter key swings your scimitar. If you reach a high enough level, you get three moves that you can do with the sword by holding the button for the right amount of time. The right mouse button or space bar fires your secondary weapon. A separate menu allows spell casting. All fighting is done in real time. Hardcore adventure and RPG players might not like the arcade style combat, but I thought it was a lot better than the combat systems of most of SSI's other games. The combat is different than in any other SSI title, I'll give it that, but it's just arcade fighting. Yeah, this is coming from someone who gets hot flashes at the mention of Fatal Fury. There's no strategy involved in it though, just attacking and running away. Strategy has never been a defining characteristic of SSI's combat engines. At least most of the combat areas have terrain that can be used to your advantage if you know where to retreat to and defend your position. Life is not all war, though. There are plenty of NPCs that'll talk to you. One of the more useless features I found while wheeling and dealing was that your character carries two different types of currency, gems and gold pieces. Some items can only be paid for using one or the other, not both. Lame, lame, lame. Come on, SSI. Let's spend the lines of code on something more fruitful next time, okay? Bitch, bitch, bitch. Every adventure game I've ever played lets you collect gems. I don't see why you're getting your boxers in a bunch over such a minor point. I know, you really miss those 3D rendered cutscenes they replaced with the three lines of code it took to handle the money system. Get a grip. Here's a good example of variety used wisely, the magic shards. By either purchasing or finding a moonstone, you can power up your scimitar with different spell-like abilities. Loyal D&D fans will recognize such powers as the Cone of Cold and Magic Missile. My only qualm about this feature was that the special power requires a different attack button. Sounds to me like you're suffering from a case of premature game playing, hmm? It's true that your scimitar can become more powerful by absorbing certain moonstones, but those moonstones with spell names are secondary weapons, like wands and staves. That's why they use a different attack key because they aren't your scimitar. I think you need to go back and read the manual again, or for the first time as the case may be. Outside of combat, al Qadim is pretty simplistic. You walk around cities and talk to strangers until one or more of them finally gives you some sort of mission. The world contains several different cities and dungeons, and there's a bazillion places to explore. The smooth scrolling graphics are pleasing to the eye, and the Arabian soundtrack does fit the game. All in all, though, al Qadim didn't live up to my expectations. There weren't enough unique things about it to get me excited. It's not a bad game, it's just more of the same. Well, I liked it a lot more than you did. al Qadim doesn't really do anything new, but it takes some good elements from other games and puts them to good use. I don't want to sound like a simpleton. You do, though. Hey, shut up. But I like the simple interface in the arcade-like combat. al Qadim has an interesting story, eye-catching graphics, decent sound, it doesn't get bogged down with the typical adventure game trappings. Sure, it's not the latest high-tech first-person viewpoint texture mapping Goro Shaded Nightmare, but it's a good, solid, and fun adventure game.